Hey everyone, this is More Than Just Trucks, a podcast for gearheads, truckers, and anyone who wants to learn more about the trucking industry. This podcast is sponsored by Truck Country and Stoops Freightliner. Come along with me as we dive deeper into what makes this $700 billion industry an essential part of all our lives. Here, we will interview industry leaders, educators, and more as we aim to inform the population on all things trucking. Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome to More Than Just Trucks podcast. I am your host, Ray Clark, and today I have uh, Mr. Mike Wolf out of our Milwaukee. He's a sales associate, and we want to discuss really what it looks like in the in the truck market. And uh, I mean, as some of you may or may not know, the effects that we've seen nationwide. So again, any suggestions on some ideas and new uh, concepts to talk about with the podcast, reach out to us at podcast at truckcountry.com. So Mike, let's uh, introduce yourself uh, to the audience and give us a little background. Give us a story of where it all began for you. Oh, sure. Well, first of all, thank you very much, Ray, for uh, allowing me to join you and to have uh, this particular conversation, because obviously um, in our world between, you know, with as far as you and I, and then um, especially with the audience that uh, that we that you get um, is a a very important topic um, and a very, uh, um, very interesting time during our uh, right now within our inter- in industry and as i'm sure you would agree with me um yeah. you know especially at this opportunity it's 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 you know you talk to people that have been around in within our industry for 20 plus years and they are flat out just telling me as and i'm sure you've heard it more than once as well that they've never once experienced anything like this before so yeah it's um, definitely it's definitely some different times uh, especially in our industry, right? I mean, I've had podcasts, uh, interviews with, uh, you know, with network people, with students in high school, and, and it's just, it's crazy some of the stuff that we're hearing out there. Yeah. So, yeah. So, let's, uh, so what got you, you know, let's start from the beginning a little bit. What got you absolutely. into the so, industry? Absolutely. So, you know, you know, um, I could just, I can be pretty in depth or I can just kind of, breeze through but i'll kind of give you the little bit of the cliff notes because i'm sure not everybody wants to be bored to death about my my upbringing but i would definitely uh one thing i will say is that um um i was uh uh, born and lived in the uh uh, suburbs of the chicago area and then in my teen years um i had the uh, opportunity and i would like to say the privilege of growing up in northern wisconsin which Um, to many people who are familiar with that area is like God's country because the fact that we're surrounded by trees and water and, and, and a lot of peace and quiet. Right. So it is nice. um, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, but I would say, you know, for one thing, as far as, as far as who I am and myself, as you know, as at a very young, young age, I always enjoyed trucks, whether it was, you know, um, watching back to the future and, you know, Marty got a brand new Toyota, right? Yeah. How exciting was that with the yep. big tires and lifted up and everything to, to, um, you know, you know, big, big Ford trucks up to, you know, which is today now, uh, for me is, you know, your be, let's be technical, your class five, six, seven, eight, eight trucks. Right. So, right. um, but, um, in between, you know, those, those, those dreams and ideas as, as a young person, um, I also, uh, worked in several other industries, but they always, always, re- always were into the sales side of things. And, you know, for me personally, I never looked at it as being a salesman. I always looked at it as being someone, um, and helping them, with their needs and wants to, so that they can get what they are looking for, uh, at, and at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? So basically I am doing my due diligence of helping someone fulfill their dreams and their needs, which in return is going to help me as well too. So yeah. I feel like it's a win-win situation and I've always felt that way. Yeah. Um, looking, looking at some of your notes and stuff. I mean, it, it's interesting to me when I, 
read people's bios or, or, you know, look back and see some of their, their upbringing and, and passing through their careers where you actually worked at a ski shop. And, yeah. And, you know, so back to your point, I mean, it's, you're a people's person, right? I mean, it's whether you're selling skis or whether you're selling paint, whether you're selling, yeah. you know, a, a class eight semi truck going down the road. Uh, I like the perspective that you put into it, that you weren't, you were helping somebody with their needs, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So when I was in a ski shop, I grew up as a competitive skier. I grew up as a free skier. Um, and what I mean by free skier is, is, that, is that I uh, expanded my horizon. And when I lived in Colorado, I was able to adventure and do um, above tree line, which or, you know, I do cat skiing, which is pretty, pretty adventurous, pretty um, um, hard things to do for many others but it was also extremely rewarding and extremely uh, enjoyable. Um, and then, but I worked in the ski shop, which means I, I worked in all facets of the shop, uh, meaning I worked with people from, from tuning their skis to selling them skis to, to I've worked in, in parts of the skiing industry from uh, um, teaching people from children to adults. Um, so as far as, as far as that goes, I just continued that process as far as helping others and working within the people, you know, people industry is like, is part of like, I would, I like to call it. And I, then I moved. And at one point in my life, I lived in um, Boston, Boston, Massachusetts, and I was selling paint and stain, you know, and again, I was focused on people and I was focused on wants and needs and how I can help fulfill their wants and needs by just doing some investigating and figuring out what's, what, what their needs are. Yeah, um, nice. And helping fulfill them, you know. So, so where did you get? Where did the door? When did that door open um, for Truck Country? And where did that? What did that look like when you? I mean, man, you've been to Colorado. You've been, uh, you know, the suburbs of Chicago, uh, yep. East Coast, Boston, and stuff like that. Where, where was the door opening uh, for the Truck Country side? So, um, the door opened with Truck Country back in. Um, late 2009 um more towards into 2010 okay um and back in that time frame um if if it, it, there was a time period where between 2007 and 8 really where we had that uh if you recall we had that recession yeah uh, within the country which affected a lot of different industries and from being in this industry since that time, you know, I learned right at that time, I learned that, that the truck industry was going through some aches and pains as well. So um, when I finally was uh, joining into the team, um, um, not only was I uh, uh, felt uh, encouraged and was given encouragement, but um I learned very quickly it was it, I, I couldn't have joined in a better time, basically because now we were coming out of the, the recession in 2010, more into 2011. OK, right. so then there were a lot of our customers that were now ready to uh, upgrade by or even get into the industry. Yeah, uh, I lived I, I lived that recession back in, in eight in New York, actually, uh, at a Freightliner dealership uh, when okay. I was starting out as a service manager and man, I'll tell you what, uh, when you, when your general manager calls you and your parts manager into the office, you're, you're thinking like, Holy cow, which one of us are on the chopping block. And, uh, fortunately neither one of us were, it was just some logistics with trying to keep the dealership afloat and, and how can we work that as a management team. And it worked out very well. We kept moving forward. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, you came in, like you said, right at the uh, end where it started to actually really started to take off a little bit better for us. Yeah. Right. So, you know, again, uh, when I reflect back on that time frame and that, and that period in my life and not only in history, um, but, but what I reflect more on my myself was, is that I personally would share with you as I well as I do with many others within our company um, is that uh, I could not have asked for better training 
um, with the company, with Truck Country, because I had an opportunity to work with several different um, managers, uh, general managers. I had uh, an opportunity to work with several different parts and service managers at different locations and different states by, by, as well, too. Um, so I got to see all facets of what our job, what our company does and um, what e entails each different department for our customers. So it really kind of at the end of the day, once I really was uh, in tune as far as what was going on, I was really able to grasp and kind of lump everything all into a funnel. And at the end of the day, I figured out that it's, it's really, um, a, a <clears throat> excuse me, it's really um, a, a work in process, uh, progress all the time. It's like parts help service, service helps sales, sales helps parts, parts, and it helps service. So we're always working together and it's all part of a team and communication. And that's something that I thoroughly enjoy. And I really have always been a part of in my life as far as being a, a team player. Yeah. And so what, what role did you start out with? I mean, what was that? Did you start right in sales right then? Not, not right away. So basically within that, tra that training process, like I was telling you, um, there were things that during that extensive training that, um, I so um, I was all over training at other locations within our company than the actual location that I was hired to be at. And my career started at at our location in Wausau, Wisconsin, um, which is basically if you take your hand and you open up your palm. That's Wisconsin, by the way, Ray. And, you know, bend your thumb and that's over by where Green Bay is. So Wausau is just smack dab of the state for those who don't know. So. Um, that's where I began and that's where the story starts for me as far as, uh, and the journey with, with, with what I do and with the company. Um, so I was given ex excellent, extensive training. And then when I was finally released to the wolves, as I like to say, um, I feel that I was completely and, and, and very confident in, um, but yet still learning. And for me, the fear is what fueled me the fear that uh, the unknown. So I was completely looking forward to getting out there and just pounding the pavement and working with people. And that's something that I, that I, I feel I'm very good at to communicate and work with others. Um, so. Yeah. Especially, you know, I, I mean, I got to ask, I mean, like I said, I've been to Wausau myself and, and the farther North you go in Wisconsin and stuff, it is definitely yeah, up to me, you know, it's God's country, right? Because I come from yeah. northern New York, very similar um, okay. look and feel, um, you know, in the Adirondack area. Uh, for those of you that have ever uh, paid attention to the 1980 Winter Olympics held in Lake Placid, I yep. wasn't that far from it. And that that's that fit and feel uh, that northern Wisconsin also. So it makes me question, right? So Wausau, northern Wisconsin, man, how, you know, I know we have a dealership up there. They're prosperous, but you know, in 2010, you're new, new to the industry, right? Yes. And you're up in the middle of almost nowhere, thinking, "How am I gonna, you know, what? Who do I sell to? How, how's this gonna work? What's it look like for me?" Um, but again, I guess for you, with that person, people personality, probably fit pretty decent. I mean, you go out and look, I mean, how's that look for somebody in sales starting out like that? Yeah. You know, I can tell you stories, Ray, some, I don't think I can say now, but I think there's, <laughs> for the most part, there's things that I will tell you um, that for me, it was without a doubt, um, a, definitely a challenge. And I made it a challenge for myself um, where I just stopped and, and <clears throat> talked to everyone. I mean, I even went to, um, small service stations in the middle of nowhere to uh, I stop at UPS places. I stopped everywhere, you know, and I mean, I put a lot, I pounded the pavement and put a lot of window time and I put my card in a lot of people's windows and a lot of people's doors, you know, and, and I didn't, I didn't. And one of the things that um, I will tell you that I was able to uh, start being very successful with was used trucks. And the reason for that is that I had um, a, a mentor as well as my manager 
who um, I'm still very close with today, um, who's not my manager anymore, but at the time he was. And one of the things he really encouraged me and pushed me to do was to uh, really move forward as far as is, is selling used used trucks. Yeah. Um, you know, because of being so new, I wasn't necessarily very polished on new trucks. So, yep. you know, I just pounded the pavement and I, you know, whatever I can sell today, I can deliver it next week and, and then move on and just continuing helping people. So that was enjoyable. Uh, I will tell you that uh, I will, I, I, I can't deny um, that uh, I have been chased out by dogs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about um, how about chased out by owners? I've I've heard some. I have been chased out by stories. owners. That is nothing new to me. I've been chased out before when I was living in Boston. So you know, one of the things that uh, in the sales world we call them when you walk into a customer's office, we call them um, gatekeepers. Okay, yes. so those are the ones at the counter, and it's just a slang. It's nothing derogatory or mean in any any way. No disrespect, but. Um, with that being said, that, you know, I learned to become a lot clever, very clever in my previous lives of how to reach out to the the, the person that the right people, to, whether it's the owner yeah. or the fleet manager or whomever. OK, well, well, let's not give away your trade secrets. Right. Yeah. Let's, let's. So, OK, so we're in Wassa. We're up. Yeah. Kinda for those. And now. Zipping forward. Now you're in a yes. bigger city, Milwaukee. So, yes. I mean we're talking, you know, like you say, a decade later through the times, I mean, probably even knowing what I know on my service side of it background is it's been a roller coaster, man. It's, it's like a business that just when you think you've hit your highest of highs or lowest of lows, it goes in a different direction on you. Is that, I mean, how's it look for you in the sales side of it? So, so yeah, so yeah, absolutely. So um, as far as to circle back, as far as going from Wausau to um, Milwaukee, without uh, getting too detailed or completely boring anybody or yourself, um, there was an opportunity. Um, I I addressed it with um, management, um, and they were and and of course very supportive, and one hundred percent backed me up, and so I was able to transfer and make that move from the uh cent- you know the middle of, of Wisconsin down to Milwaukee Wisconsin so with that being said moving forward uh being here now um was again starting all over Ray I basically was knocking on doors um I, I did not bring any I mean I did not bring any customers with me um because I'm out of a different territory right great, so great. I had whole new territory and, and start over I had zero fear and because I, I firm believer that I don't want, you know, fear can't control me. So I wanted to, I, again, I used it as another challenge and I was up for it because I already had the skills, I already had the knowledge and I already had the capabilities. All I had to do is, is, is have the people, right? Yep. Put new so, faces and I, and, names and at the time I had the inventory. So, and I'm, I'm going to reflect on that moving forward. So remember at the time I had the inventory. I just wanted to repeat that. <laughs> so moving forward, um, um, being down in Milwaukee, had a, had a fan, I, ha- I have a fantastic supporting cast um, and I have a fantastic team that I work with. So um, there were n- never since day one ever any issues with that. Um, so but again, I had to start over just like anybody else, you know, that was hired new off the street. So um, so, it, you know, for me, it worked out very well. Um, I'm a, I'm a, again, going back to being a people person, I'm the kind of person that you're going to see and in our service department, in our parts department, whether it's morning, afternoon, or even when the sun goes down, I'm going to, I'm going to stick my nose in there and just kind of see people standing around and then just introducing myself and saying, hello, I have no, uh, no qualms with that whatsoever. So in my, so for me personally, all it took when I was to move to Milwaukee was I had to say hello to one person, one person I said hello to. And I said, wow, those are really cool shoes. Where did you get those? I've never seen shoes like that as colorful as they are. And from there, it just blossomed and took off. And then I had referrals and then this referral and that referral. So that in itself was is is for me how that I made that work. 
So and it's, and I'm, I'm going to jump in quick. Make that work. Go ahead. I'm word, sorry. No, I'm going to jump in. So word to audience, salespeople. All you got to do is comment on somebody's shoes. And referrals <laughs> come in. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, again, I'm not afraid to say hello. I'm not afraid to reach out and just compliment somebody. You know, some people, you know, hey, some people don't aren't aren't really warm to my personality, aren't very warm to my my pleasantry, I guess you could say. Hey, but, that's but, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. And 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 by the way, I'm okay with that. I can I can handle that, you know? Yeah. Um but but as far as um the moving forward, I got down into Milwaukee in October of 2019. Yeah, that had to so, been a huge, I mean just for those, I mean, that live in Wisconsin, know the difference between, hey, what's Wausau look like to what Milwaukee looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so if you, if you, if you reflect on the time frame and, and, and today's date, so it was October of 2019, finished out the year as strong as I could. Um, again, you know, constantly, building up my, um, my data, my database, as far as contacts and, and people to work with and, and, and meet and greet or or meet, excuse me. So then 2020 hit boom COVID. Yes, sir. So then we had that whole January, February, it was more like February, correct. When, when the government is telling us that we need to, it was an eye week. It was an eye opener for the whole world. Let's yeah, not exactly. Let's let's yeah. not, you know, no need to hide anybody. it. Everybody knows it. Yep, exactly. It was it was a change from from the training department to the service department. Like companies, right? Holy cow! Employees need to uh, work from home if they can. We can't travel anywhere. We can't do this. We can't do that. So, yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, here's you, right? I'm Mike Wolf. Right. I'm I'm a guy that loves to go out and see people, and all of a sudden somebody's got a ball and chain and locked me to my house, right. Or locked me to my dealership. I can't go out and I can't give that, that high personality. Hey, how are you face to face anymore? Yeah. So, so for someone like myself, obviously, and the way you're describing for yourself as well, which I know about already, that it was a very interesting time. It was a very, um, it was, it was, it was strange. It was very strange. And I felt, I mean, and I almost felt like you said, it's just, you, you can't go anywhere. You can't, you know, and, and then I also got to the point where it's like, when you almost don't want to like, you know, but yet I never really felt that experience for me personally. I was chopping at the bit to get out of my house and yeah. I love my kids and I love my wife, but you know what? It, there's, you can only hang out with each other so much in a, in a confined area. So, yeah. um, um, but what was interesting about that whole situation was, is that the world kind of stopped. Um, and then as far as on my side, the orders stopped coming in. In fact, orders were being canceled. So, um, I had X a number of trucks that I was ready to deliver and about 60% of those got canceled. So what so here what I am you- sitting going, Okay, what's what's going on? What what next? Right. Well, what do you I'm not think the only was one. the cause though for those cancellations. You think it was fear? Was was it the fear of the unknown in the future? Right. It, it was the fear. It was it was in, no doubt the absolute fear, because even even um, whether you call it fear or the unknown, but it was definitely fear on the customer side. I think that there was um, you know on 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 the sales side we um there was some some obviously some concerns and some fear as well but um we still plowed forward we still continue to to do our job in my opinion okay so the team my team and and my personally myself we still we're still pushing forward to do what we can so i will tell you i will tell you that i believe that i was i'm i'm i do very well on the phone but i feel that i I um, made my presence and my voice. Um, how do I say this? I ex- I feel like I became a much better communicator 
uh, during those times because everything was by phone. And- yeah, I was just going to say, now it's all vocal, but it's not face-to-face. It's all verbal via phone. Yeah. So, correct. So, everything, you know, you have to, you know, look at you and I both know that 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 uh, that it's a handshake, it's a meet and greet. It's 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 you know when I'm sh- when I'm when I have a customer I'm working with, it's a touch, feel, smell type of situation. They want to they want to see the truck, they want to touch the truck, they want to they want to drive the truck if the, if if possible if they can. Right. right? right. So that's how you build so the that customer that relationship. Taken away. What's that, Ray? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's how you build those relationships, right? And yeah, so trust all that. that was taken away. So you talk about taking away, you know, a humongous portion of what you do for a living. It was, it was, it was very, very uh it was a it was a trying times. And it's in a lot of cases, you know, obviously it still is, and we can get into that, but that was that was some definite trying times. And then and then as we move forward, you know, into um, I would say more like the April May timeframe of January of 2020. Um, really, one of the one of the industries that was really, in hindsight, really thriving was the trucking industry because they were considered essential. Yeah, that's going to say. Yeah, I mean, our, our transportation and, side really didn't slow down, but yeah, it did kind of in the shadows. In the shadows, it slowed down, no doubt. In the shadows, but. They were considered essential. So when I'm talking to drivers, um, they are literally telling me during that time frame, you know, between, you know, that February, March, April, May time frame that they are literally driving down the road and they feel like they're the only ones on the highway, which, you know, I'm exaggerating, but the, the, the amount of vehicles were not there. The people yeah. were not there. It was a very, again, it was very strange for them as well. You know, I, I can attest to that though. Mike, as you know, I, I oversee our training center in Indianapolis, and yeah, really, I I kept my travel up and uh, just was very conscientious about the hotels that I, you know, I tried to stay, and they did a great job with that. But to your point, traveling the highway as much as I did between Dubuque, Iowa, and Indianapolis, I, I'm going to tell you, it was like a ghost town at times. Literally, I, I I felt like I was the only. Uh, what do they call them? They call them four wheelers, right? I felt like I was one of the only four wheelers amongst semis going up and down the road. Sure. Sure. And you know, Ray, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but Indianapolis is one of my favorite cities, one of my favorite cities in the country. And, and I can, I can't even imagine not, I can't even imagine it the way you're describing it. So that's, that's, that's unbelievable, but it's true, right? Yes. So, um, but so then, so then once the spring hit, once spring came in 2020, see, right. One thing about myself, if, 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 if you haven't read between the lines or the people listening have not read between the lines, I, the way I look at myself in, and the way I look at things is I always look at things is the glass is always half full. Okay. I never look at a glass half empty because um, I look at everything as half full and every situation is a challenge. Yep. Stay and, optimistic. And, and to be opt absolutely, you know, in life as well as in my, in my career, you have to be optimistic because you always have to be moving forward. Yep. So once spring hit, things really started to click all of a sudden, like with everybody being home still, then the, um, the supply industry's orders were getting bigger and more and more quantities. So our, our customers were extremely, and they were not only busy, but they were getting busier and busier and busier. So what transpired was, is that all of a sudden now they're buying newer, now they're buying trucks again and they're buying more trucks And they're adding to their fleets and we can't, you know, and then there was an issue right away where also now we can't get new trucks anymore. So now the used truck industry became in 2020 became extremely busy 
I mean, over the top busy yeah. to the point where the way to describe it is, and the way I describe to every single person I talk to that's that's looking to purchase a truck, if, and and I treat every single one equally the first time I meet them or talk to them, is that I tr- and and I explain them to every person I talk to up front is that I let them know that I don't know what you know or don't know, but I'm just going to start off by saying that our inventory and our is is based on supply and demand. And right now, due to the fact of the, the pandemic and what's going on, there are there are more demands on our trucks used and new, but we couldn't get new, but there's more demand than there is supplies. Yeah. I, I heard comments, Mike, everything to the fact that wholesale trucks were now becoming retail trucks. You know, you're hundred percent right. They have been, they have been, um, there was a period Time, time period where wholesale trucks became retail trucks. And I can attest to that because I had, I've sold some of those units that, you know, a year and a half ago to, you know, in 2018, 2019, we called those wholesale trucks if they were over 550,000 miles. And, and now today, people are just looking for mile truck can be a retail truck. Yeah. Crazy. But so, again, that demand, there's that there's that roller coaster instance, right, where one one thing drops, and it hits that low. But the other thing is, is, man, riding that wave up to the peak again. You know, you know, Ray, I couldn't agree with you more. But one way I would use as as a uh, description or how I paint a picture for people within their so that and then they can picture it in, in their head. As I ask people, have you ever played dominoes or did you ever play with the dominoes pieces as a child? Did you ever stand them up and line them up piece by piece and then create kind of a a path, right? So if you hit that very first domino that you put up and then you put another one in front of that and another one in front of that, and then all of a sudden you have all these domino pieces stacked in front of each other, you push that one domino, it's going to push the other one over and then the other one over and then the other one over and then the other one over. So what's happening is and the way I describe it is it's like a domino effect. We're having, we're at the point now where we have, you know, the supply chain issues and, and the fact that with the supply and demand that it's, if we can't get this part, we can't finish this truck. We can't deliver this truck. This person is waiting and has it on hold, and we don't have an ETA when we can deliver it. So it's a complete in- domino effect that that we're all feeling the pain yeah. and feeling and, the frustrations. And what I want to so, jump in here real quick is for the audience that um, they all know. You know, we're we're Freightliner Daimler truck badged, right? And I think Michael Michael back me on this, but people, it is not just Freightliner. It is every OEM out there right now that is having difficulty to produce parts, produce inventory and in trucks. So again, um, I know sometimes you have me. I'm a I'm a Chevy guy, right? So Chevy's my go-to every time I get a vehicle. But uh, for those of you that are Freightliner only people, and and then want to kind of like, holy cow, you can't get me a truck. I'm going to, I'm going to Kenworth or whatever. And Hey, you know what? You're going to hear and see. Um, I'm going to tell you that our salespeople are probably going to be open eyes with you and, and not tell you, Oh yeah, I can get you a truck. And and it, they're going to tell you the, the straight up facts and um, no BS across the board. But I, I'm honestly, man, I've heard it nationwide that all OEMs are seeing the and feeling this pain. They really are. And you're 100% right on that. You know, we're all feeling the pain. We're all feeling the frustrations. Um, and, um, you know, just being right here in Milwaukee with the, the other OEM dealerships around us and even our own, um, I'll give you, you know, I've seen some things where we, uh, one of the, we, in, in not only are we a Freightliner dealership, we're also um, um, Western Star as well. So with that being said, I saw one of our brand new, beautiful Western Star 49X is being delivered and it was missing the bumper. Yeah. Well, the, we had to wait uh, that particular salesman, our, 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 our dealership, we had to wait probably four or five weeks, I believe, before that bumper actually showed up. Because, I mean, you know how they, you know, the whole joke, what are they uh they butchering the chicken back there. What's taking so long? Why is my chicken not here? I ordered right. it you know, half an hour ago. 
Well, this is actually true. They're building that as we speak, you know? So, um, and then when you get a, an email, that says no ETA at this time, it's like, Oh boy, you know, yeah, what do you do? That's, but, some t- that's some tough information really to send back as a customer. I mean, it's just, I mean, I try to always, so my mentality very much like you, I'm very optimistic. I, I try to look at everything um, like you do is half full and, and how do we improve and stuff. But you know, I try to really on, on a business sense, I try to view from the customer's view, right? I try to stand yep. in their shoes, as we say, and we try to practice and preach. It's like, okay, if I'm that guy on the other side of the fence, the other side of the desk, man, how would I feel? You know, it's like, man, I know how I feel. I'd be like, I'd be pissed or upset or however you want to say it. But yeah, it, it's, it's, that's a hard pill to swallow. And, and as salespeople, right? I mean, Man, some some of you, no matter how forward you are, like yourself, some people just can't get themselves really to break bad news to people at times, right? I mean, it, it's sometimes that's just a pain point that even the best of the best don't want to have those type of conversations with people. I will tell you, Ray, if we could, I I will tell you, um, and I'll give you an example um, based on exactly what you just said that I work with some of um, very intelligent people. I work with some very good salespeople um, that, you know, not that their, their product knowledge is a number one, their, um, their communication with their, their customers and especially their core customers. And what I mean by that is the fact that these are customers that they've worked with for 20 years, 15 years. And they're, you know, and like, for instance, one customer, it is 100% of uh, Freightliners in their fleet and they have well over 300 trucks. Okay. And they've been customers with freight, with, with, with truck country for 20 plus years for, you know, not this particular salesman, but there are other salesmen that were like, how do I go back? So when in December or, or prior that to that, and don't, and, and I, and I'm, I can't hundred percent pinpoint the month, but I know that there was a point where, um, the, uh, model year increase came and that was a certain number. And then, and then we were being told that there was not going to be a raw materials charge passed on to us. Well, then December slash, you know, then December came beginning of, of, or I think it was December that all of a sudden now we have to go back to our customers because unfortunately, um, they could not, uh, meaning Freightliner Western Star could not absorb that particular amount of raw materials uh, <clears throat> that was being charged to them to build trucks. Okay, so not only did you have to go to your customer and say, "Well, here's your model increase number," and add that to your truck for new, and then you had to go back a month later or so and say, "Well, unfortunately, now we have to." charge you an additional, oh, by the way, Mr. Customer, we have to dish, uh, charge you an additional X B of for raw materials on top of what the, the already um, model year increase was. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it, it was not a comfortable, yeah, Ray, it was not a comfortable situation for a lot of, of the salespeople we work with. So, and, and I can understand that and I respect that, but at the same time, I would, I would give them the utmost encouragement and just to be completely and utterly transparent, completely upfront and, and be just in a, in a, in a, in a respectful uh, way, just be very literal and just, yeah, yeah be you gotta front. be, you know, can you, and, can and you imagine on the rug, just deal with it, building, being in the middle of a brand new house built because the same scenario happens right in the, in the construction world. And you've got a house quoted at X amount of dollars and they're in the middle of the build and all of a sudden they're telling you, oh, by the way, homeowner, new to be, it's going to be another hundred or $200,000 because materials just went up. So my point of that was it, it wasn't just the truck industry. We all saw and felt it as consumers across the oh, board. Oh, 100%. I mean, it was just crazy. And that's why I say, I mean, can you imagine living like you right i mean just be transparent i mean be open and honest up front here's what it is 
Um, and I think that probably was the best approach for a lot of people. I've got a couple other friends in, in sales, but in different avenues. And the ones that really prosper, that are still there, still hanging out, still have a great customer base, are like yourself, very open, honest, upfront, transparent. Um, same scenario, like I said, man, take take guy like you, throw him into the middle of this big crowd, and all of a sudden, uh, an hour later, you got 20 friends, right? You, you've met and you've got friends. So being that personality, I think, definitely helps uh, helps you as a salesperson. So we've talked about your you know, start where you're at today. We know that, you know, COVID and the, the whole world really has had some hiccups with, with the, the inventories, availability, pricing, shortages and parts, you know, availability of trucks and stuff. So that's a pass we've talked about today. What do we, so what's your perspective? What's your outlook for the future? So if I were to, to, to reflect on, uh, from the beginning to today in a very short, quick way. Um, but I don't want to be too short because I want to be very clear. And so people understand, including yourself. Um, and if you don't, please ask me to um, be more specific or clarified. But I would say that um, it got to a point where we were not even allowed to pre-sell trucks um, unless our corporate office actually physically had a title in their hand because we got nipped in the bud a little bit when um, in the past we're used to coming out with lists of trucks, right? Well, we've got this many coming in this month and this many coming in that month. And these are the trucks that are coming. Well, um, you know, what happened was is that with this price increase and everything else, and then we got, um, we were only allowed to order so many trucks versus what we actually reality, what we wanted to customers were canceling their orders. I'm sorry, customers are canceling what they were trading. So that's where the supply and demand was coming in heavily, you know, and then for someone like myself, where I actually wrote up um, what, what I wrote up, I sold like 20 trucks and it turns out that those 20 trucks aren't coming in. So now I have to go back to my customers and say, I'm sorry that the customer has decided to keep their truck. So right. one right. of the things moving forward is, is that we have, you know, is, and it's because of the supply and demand. So we've, I can tell you that we had a price increase in November of 2021, four times. And that's just not us. That is the, that's just us going with the market. So, so one of the things, that has been a reflection of that is the fact that as we get later in the year, one of the things that I'm trying to educate every single person that I talk to, and sometimes I have to repeat myself and that's fine, I don't mind, is that um, that, that customers today are gonna have to come to either uh, you know a, a realization that trucks today are gonna have a lot more miles on them than they're what they're looking for. And especially the, the trucks with those particular higher miles, are going to have a higher price tag because of the supply and demand. Yeah. Okay. So well, let me jump in real quick. Okay. Cause I want to make clear to the audience and the ones that are listening to your point though. Right. Everybody's like in the old days, our, our mentality in the, if we knew trucks or new vehicles, no matter what our, our mentality was like, Oh, high mileage, that thing's going to wear out. I don't want those headaches. What I will tell the audience today and I'm going to speak on kind of somewhat toot the horn for Daimler and Detroit, because I will tell you that what I see at the shops on the engine side of it, especially um, they, they've got Detroit's that are running with extended mileage, not seeing any internal it. Now, again, it's all based on maintenance and ownership of it, but, in the old day, three to 500,000, man, you were looking to freshen up your, your diesel engine. I've seen trucks come through the door five and 700,000 and haven't even been torn to. So again, not to, not to scare anybody with this newer, higher mileage um, supply and demand thing. These trucks, if they're maintained, shouldn't be so afraid of that higher mileage truck if it's been. And, and I just wanted to point that out to people because I know um, some, some of the... Uh, some of the generations really thought that high mileage vehicles, no matter what it was, was like, nope, don't want that headache. 
No, I don't disagree with you at all. And you, you know what? I want to give a huge shout out to Freightliner Western Star as well, too, and 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 you know, and as well as Detroit, uh, all working together and working with us, you know, the sales team slash dealerships to be able to help assist with customers and to help assist with the trucks that were that were presenting to them. Um, um, the uh, extended warranties that we're able to do, you know, I mean, like Freightliner and, and Western Star have come up with a used truck, uh, a used truck warranty that is an OEM warranty. And with that being said, we're they're able to purchase a warranty that's if that's similar or or or, or very similar, if not similar to what the truck already has in existence. Um, it's not a hundred percent the same, but, but, you know, and I can get in more details with individuals, but for this, for this, for this conversation, um, you can, you know, depending on the mileage and that's the thing, there's a mileage, um, discrepancy on certain things. So, you know, if the truck's under 650, you know, they can add a 12 month, 100,000 mile use truck, uh, limited coverage on there. Okay. Yeah. And so they the truck, go ahead. They've made it, you know. They've made it, and it, I'm going to steal it from our own company, um, Truck Country, with our kind of customer-driven mentality of, hey, customer X, let's work with you here. We're going to at least give you, okay, yeah, it's a used truck, but we're going to give you some some warranty comfort zone right there. So that is it. That, exactly, man. Hats off to them for uh, absolutely. You know, in in you know, Ray, you know just as well as I do that when I add this to the truck, um, our team the mechanics and, 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 and our, our management team have made a decision on, I would say a good portion, if not all of them, but a good 90%, let's just say 95%, the ones that aren't wholesale and so on and so forth, that, that they, um, during our, our UTI or use truck inspection slash DOT process, that the truck is then certified ahead of time before the truck's even sold so that when salespeople sell the truck, it's ready. It's already certified. It's ready okay. to go. We have the paperwork in our system and it's done. So that makes it even more convenient for the buyer, the end user to, to, to move forward. And, and, and we save a lot of time. Okay. Yep. So with that being said, there's a tremendous opportunity to purchase an extended warranty. And again, that peace of mind. That 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 ability to then purchase a truck with, you know, my gosh, with six hundred thousand miles, if 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 we have one for sale on a use use you, you retail side, that you have the ability to add warranty to that, and that is that is a tremendous that is huge, and yeah. not only in addition to that, if I may add, that it's also it's treated at our service and parts department like a new truck's treated because when this this pro when these uh, when this product these warranties are purchased and added to the truck. All that customer has to do is take his truck to any Freightliner or Freightliner Western Star OEM certified dealership. They take the last six digits of your VIN and there you are, you know, your ABC trucking, there you go. And this is the warranty that's on the truck and this is what's available. Boom. It's, it's very simple. It's, it's treated just like a new truck. And, and, and I, you know, in my opinion, I couldn't be happier. And I have customers that have called and said that they could not be happy. Okay. So they try to make this and I try to make this as simple and more beneficial as possible for them. Yeah. So where do you see the future? I mean, right now, I mean, like I said, I mean, I've, I've heard numbers as far as Freightliner really, you know, same with Chevy, same with Ford and Dodge. Like I said, do you see this lasting? I mean, I, I guess it, you know what, that's kind of a loaded question, isn't it? Cause now I'm sitting back thinking about it and saying, does, does anybody really know where, where this is, or the time frame? I should say, where this is could end or, you know, where's that light at the end of the tunnel for us in, in our industry. And, and that is a hard one really to answer. I mean, so optimistically, right. You and I are going to look at it and say, well, you know, hopefully in another six months, we can see things change. Um, myself personally, that, I mean, I guess I'm that kind of guy that's going to say, hey, you know what, hopefully in six months, same same as you probably. Um, but yeah, it's going to be, it's totally changed everybody's perspective from park service sales, 
the way we live, what we do? I would, yeah, I would, I would hundred percent. I definitely would agree with you what you're saying on, on all parts, except that if someone were to ask me, I wouldn't, I'm not saying six months. I'm not saying, I'm not saying a year either. Um, first and foremost, I would start it out as being lighthearted and say, well, if I had a crystal ball, I would be, you know, uh, a millionaire plus, and I could predict anything and everything. Right. So, and you wouldn't work be working for truck country. Ball. What's that? And you wouldn't be working for truck country. Right. Well, no. Right. But so basically then I would, I would, end, I would finish that by saying, so I don't have a crystal ball. Therefore I'm not a multimillionaire. So I'm going to tell you my, my, my opinion and my thoughts and my opinion and thoughts are, it's been, I, I, I'm predicting a probably 18 months from now, maybe at this point, probably between 15 and 18. Okay. And, and, and because I feel that as, as the world progresses and people, be, and, you know, I, I tell people all the time, please don't take this the wrong way. I am empathetic and I feel horrible about what's happened to a lot of people, but I also want people to start to think and be more optimistic, think positive and, and live your lives, but live your life knowing your past yeah. and knowing the past and be cautious. With that being said, I feel that as a country and as a world, things, um, it's, it thinks what, what, you know, what, what comes up must come down. Right. You know, right. So hopefully, that's that roller coaster ride. Yeah. It's that roller coaster. So exactly. So with that being said, um, I can't, you know, I mean, you know, the world could end tomorrow, but I think if we were to plow and move forward, I think it's more of that 15, 18 month period. And people always ask me, you know, Hey, is this the new norm? You know, <laughs> It, it's it, in, in some cases and some things in the world, it might be, you right. know, it might right. be, but, 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 you know, I think things will, things will kind of level off and change and, and, you know, be, get more open. But I think that, so Ray, one of the things that I will tell you that I talk to people all the time is when people say, Oh, wow, that's expensive. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait, you know, and, and, and this isn't, this isn't a question of, to them so I can make a sale. This is not a question so I can get paid. This is a question to help <clears throat> to help them open up their thoughts and open up their minds and really think is when they say I'm going to wait and then I, so then my response would be, so by you waiting six to 12 months, how do you think that's going to help your situation today? And if things don't change in six to 12 months, what is your goal? What is your plan? And, and, and what, and, and as far as moving forward and how are you going to handle that? Yeah. Good outlook, right? Good, good way to, to put that in perspective for somebody. Yeah. yeah and I will tell you that I don't get a lot of answers. Right. Because you, that's where at that point, Mike, I think you've got them thinking now, like, Oh, yeah, I, I don't know as if I've thought that far ahead or if I've thought about today's instant response of, well, if I don't do anything today, what's going to happen, right? Uh, their thought is, you know what, I'm just going to probably play safe and sit tight and see what happens. I agree. And they do. And then unfortunately, for, fortunately, I'm, or unfortunately, I should say, I'm sorry, Um they they made the right decision or they made the wrong decision the only time yeah. will tell but yeah. you know as as a as as someone in my position i feel to help them first sell them second because it's at the end of the day by me selling them something and it didn't work out isn't going to make me feel good about it right so i would rather sell them something and 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 be able to have them come back and they were happy with the what what working with me truck country and and the truck that they purchased to get a different one to get another one or get five more who knows right right, right. but but um you're right no they did a lot of them don't have answers they don't some of them do some of them would come up with answers and that's because they're being optimistic that's because they're thinking um 
of 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 their future and and they're and they've had that thought you know you know and 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 hey i'm a huge advocate of 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 be here be here now you know be in the moment and understand exactly what's going on around you and being aware of that moment and not only that 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 what happens today can reflect tomorrow and so on and so forth so you know it ray all i can say is is that um I hope things do change. Yeah. A lot yeah. I think, people. yeah, I think we're and all in that boat. And, and I believe it will. Yep. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, a great conversation. Hopefully the audience uh, gets a good take and perspective from it. And uh, again, thank you for being on my show here today. Uh, love that. Like I said, that optimistic glass half full, you and I have a lot in common with that. We got uh, that people person skill set. Um, and again, I got, Shout out to Daimler Trucks. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Daimler Trucks is, that is the mothership and brand of uh, Freightliner and Western Star Trucks and Detroit Engines. But again, uh, I want to end it up with thank you, Mike, for being on the show. And thank you for all the listeners today for more than just trucks podcast sponsored by Truck Country Stoops. And uh, keep in mind, we are one of the largest family owned and operated dealerships in the U.S. today. Uh, we cover six plus states out there with uh, from Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, God's country, all the way uh, east to Ohio. And again, uh, reach out to Mike Wolf with any of your sales needs and any suggestions, again, and interest, uh, conversations for the podcast. Reach out to me at podcast at truckcountry.com. And again, Mike, thanks for being on the show. Hey, thanks, Ray. I appreciate you. Uh... Um, uh, having me come on and uh, I hope we can uh, uh, get together again in the near future. Very good. All right, Mike, have a good day. We'll see you now.